Hi guys, I felt sort of rushed in class, so I mean, I finished up talking about carbs and I just wanted to review that we're talking about polymers. Um, right here, I've got a list of four polymers. We've got carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. Those are the four main biomolecular families. They're also called the four main macromolecules. Um, and they each have different roles. And we're going to go over carbs today and then Next class, we'll go over lipids and proteins, and we'll be doing nucleic acids next week. So carbs are used for energy. Our body uses it so we can do work. Um, we store carbs, and it also makes is the structural component of a lot of organisms, like plants and insects, exoskeletons. And examples of those are right here at the bottom. Um, lipids are used for longer term energy and we store that energy often. Um, it can be used for insulation, um, protection, waterproofing. So a lot of our chemical messengers are lipids so they don't dissolve in water. Um, and again, some examples are on the bottom there. Nucleic acids are the blueprint for our inheritance. They make up our RNA, which it helps our bodies make the right proteins. And there's some examples right here. And finally, proteins um, can serve as catalysts for all sorts of chemical reactions in our body. They are hormones and they make up a lot of the structure in our body. And there's some examples there. Um, so carbs, how sweet it is. Um, they all have a general formula of CH2O. Um, you guys made a sugar molecule, a pretty simple one in class today with the little poppet beads we were using. Um, their simple sugars are made up of monomers, and more complicated ones are polymers. Um, but the monomer of a sugar is called a monosaccharide, and they get linked together through a condensation reaction, which we had just talked about, which, remember, is building up a polymer. So a classic example is here's alpha glucose and beta glucose being smashed together and water squirting out. Remember, it's like two cars on a train getting linked. Um, and that is now a disaccharide called maltose. Um, and it can be stored and used later to give a little more energy. So monosaccharides are either made up of a five carbon ribose um, or a six carbon, which is a molecule, which is glucose or fructose. Um, so there's a classic ribose. Notice how it's got a pentagon. And then there's fructose, which is a different structural organization, and there's glucose. Um, disaccharides, some common ones that you guys have probably heard of are sucrose and lactose. And again, they're linked together. They're two monosaccharides forming a di or two molecule saccharide. And polysaccharides um, are going to be in the form of either starches, um, cellulose or glycogen. And the important thing about polysaccharides is they just hold so many more bonds and they can carry a lot more energy or provide a lot more structure in that way. So the three main types of polysaccharides, I think I have a little link here. Let's see if it'll work for us. All right here. And we'll just go right here. And do a little review of monosaccharides. And Carbohydrates then... include simple sugars called monosaccharides, as well as large polymers called polysaccharides. Glucose is a hexose, a sugar composed of six carbon atoms, usually found in ring form. A starch macromolecule is a polysaccharide composed of thousands of glucose units. Glucose molecules can be added to starch by a condensation reaction. In condensation reactions, two molecules covalently bond to each other and release a water molecule. Here, the bond forms between the first carbon of one glucose and the fourth of the other, creating an alpha-1 or glycosidic linkage. Branching of new chains can also occur between carbons 1 and 6. Different types of starches are, in fact, distinguished by the amount of branching. Amylose, or plant starch, is not highly branched. Glycogen, by comparison, is highly branched.
This polysaccharide is stored in animal livers and muscles. Polysaccharides are forms of stored energy that can be easily hydrolyzed to yield glucose. Glucose can then be further broken down to release energy that's used in cellular activity. So did you sort of hear some of those words that we had talked about earlier today in class? condensation reactions and hydrolysis reactions. Remember, condensation reactions are where we store energy, and hydrolysis reactions is when we're trying to break the bonds. So glycogen, which they talked about there, is a, it's a form of a polysaccharide that animals can store in their liver or their muscles. Um, it's highly branched, and what happens is glucose, monosaccharides, get turned into glycogen through a condensation reaction and then they get broken down through a hydrolysis reaction into glucose again and then get released in your bloodstream and you use that energy to do work that you need to do. Um, starch is another polysaccharide that's only made in plants um, but we can digest it. It's got a helical structure and um, it's pretty easy to digest. Uh, digest um, and useful to us. Cellulose, which this picture shows cellulose, is a little bit different. It's found in plant cell walls and insect exoskeletons, and it's indigestible to us and to most animals. Um, it's almost entirely made up of these beta glucoses, and it's um, really packed into these straight microfibrils that we can't really digest. So it's not an energy source for us. Um, and as I mentioned, it's in chitin's exoskeletons. So there's the alpha and the beta glucose. And this is just showing cellulose as these um, sort of complicated um, structures that are really hard for us to break down. So what's the difference between a condensation and hydrolysis reaction? Basically, here's a quick animation to show you. Biological molecules are made up of repeating subunits. Such molecules are called polymers, meaning many parts, and their subunits are called monomers, meaning one part. For example, proteins are composed of amino acids, complex carbohydrates are composed of simple sugars, and nucleic acids are composed of nucleotides. Biological polymers form by condensation reactions, which are accompanied by the formation of water molecules. Each of the monomers in a condensation reaction has a hydroxyl or OH group and a hydrogen or H group. In the course of the reaction, an H is removed from one monomer and an OH from the other. The H and OH combine to form water and a bond links the two monomers. Condensation reactions are also called dehydration reactions because water is removed from the reactants. Let's examine how amino acids, which are monomers, react to form a polypeptide or protein, which are polymers. Each amino acid has a carboxyl functional group and an amino functional group. In the reaction between two amino acids, an OH group is removed from the carboxyl group of one amino acid. An H is removed from the amino group of the other amino acid, and a bond forms between them. The H and OH join to form a molecule of water. The sequence in which amino acids join determines the protein structure and function. In this example of a condensation reaction, nucleotide monomers join to form RNA, a polymer. Hydrolysis is the opposite of a condensation reaction. Hydrolysis literally means to split with water. Hydro means water, and lysis means to split. A polymer can be reduced to its monomer subunits by the addition of H and OH, water. An H is added to one monomer, 
and an OH is added to the other. In this example, hydrolysis breaks a polypeptide into its component amino acids. The amino acids released are free to be incorporated into a new protein. The same kind of reaction occurs with the help of enzymes when we digest foods containing protein. Click every bond where... We're going to skip that little section, but you kind of get the idea there. Um, this is another link that just shows the hydrolysis of sugar, which... Um, talks about how our body is breaking it down in our body. An function in the body is from the enzyme sucrase. Sucrase resides on the surface of the microvilli on the intestinal epithelial mucosal cell surfaces. This animation presents a graphical representation of the way that sucrase catalyzes the hydrolysis of the common disaccharide sucrose, which we know as table sugar, into its component monosaccharides glucose or blood sugar, and fructose or fruit sugar. Hydrolysis is accomplished because when the sucrose molecule binds to the active site of the enzyme, the enzyme's configuration is changed so that the oxygen bridge between the two monosaccharides is exposed to water molecules in the solvent. This exposure permits a water molecule to actually break the bond, the oxygen bridge, and attach the components of water, an OH to one of the monosaccharides and an H to the oxygen, which is still attached to the second monosaccharide. This effectively cleaves the bond between the two monosaccharides and converts the disaccharide into two separate sugars. Once this is accomplished, the enzyme's configuration is changed back to the original shape. The two monosaccharides float away and the site becomes available for another sucrose molecule to bind, change the enzyme's configuration, and be hydrolyzed. This action can be repeated many times until the enzyme becomes denatured, is inhibited, or just wears out. Cool. So I hope you guys feel pretty good about um, condensation and hydrolysis reactions, and I'm just going to end with this quick review of carbs. And then... You guys can answer a bunch of questions, so I might get cut off, but you guys can finish it on your own. All carbohydrates are built from molecular monomers, or subunits called sugars, that contain only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. The typical sugar has a backbone of three to seven carbon atoms. Most of these carbon atoms have a hydrogen group and a hydroxyl group attached to them. Thus, the general formula for sugars is CH2ON, where N is the number of carbons in the backbone. It is from this formula that carbohydrates derive their name, which literally means carbon and water. When dissolved in a watery environment such as the cytoplasm of a cell, the carbon backbone of a sugar usually circles up into a ring. It is in this ring form that sugars are linked together by dehydration reactions to make larger carbohydrate molecules. Carbohydrates fall into one of three categories, depending on the number of sugars they contain. Carbohydrates, such as glucose or fructose, that consist of a single sugar monomer, are called monosaccharides. Sucrose, lactose, and other carbohydrates that contain two sugar monomers are called disaccharides. Starch, glycogen, cellulose, and other carbohydrates made out of long chains of sugars are called polysaccharides. Glucose is the most common monosaccharide and one of the most abundant sources of chemical energy in the living world. Glucose is the sugar found in the highest concentration in the blood of animals, and our own central nervous systems are critically dependent on glucose for energy. But glucose molecules are also the building blocks for the polysaccharide cellulose. 
Cellulose is the major structural material 